So I, I wake up some mornings and think, Mom, where, where's Paul Luke? He's not here. And she's just, oh, he's, he's in Zurich today, Geordie. And ne next few weeks, just wake up, where's Paul Luke now? He's in Brazil. Brazil? Skateboarding has definitely got me like all around the world, really. I've been to like, places like Brazil, China, all around Europe, all around the United States. And yeah, it's just a great opportunity. I, I know a lot of people my age would want to do the same like, thing. They want to go to wherever, but um, what am I even saying? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. As a player of the old Tony Hawk games, I thought, I don't know, a pro was something that Mr. Tony Hawk pronounced and uh, I don't know. But I learned that it's more or less about money. A lot of people say it's not about the money, but usually when it comes down to it, it kind of is about the money. Skating in the UK is, um, I guess it's less professional because people aren't as good in England for some reason. Uh, I grew up in England until I was about, I guess, 15. And yeah, I just pretty much grew up skating over there. I uh, picked up a board when I was like nine or 10 and started going to the skate parks. Around the time when Paul Luke was skating, it, it seemed as though as as he, he, he got popular as he got better. I skated a few professional competitions when I was about 14 or 15. Uh, they were mostly in Europe, and uh, I think now like it's kind of changed. Like you, you have to, if you're going to do a pro, you have to be pro. But I wasn't really pro then. I was just kind of doing these contests. It was very important that he moved to San Diego. Even my family always wanted to move out here because it's such a good place, you know, the weather, like skateboarding definitely, and just like, it'd be a great opportunity. We moved here primarily because my dad got a job at Legoland. All of a sudden there was an opportunity for him to have a job out here at Legoland. And yeah, he went for that and everything kind of came together. I wouldn't be out here if it wasn't for that. So that was a, a really good thing and it was kind of a lucky coincidence that it had to be uh, San Diego which is like the mecca of skateboarding. All the, the vert scene lies in California. That's where all the vert skaters are and all the pros and the ramps. It's more of a sport over here. Yeah, moving to the US definitely opened up a lot of doors to me skateboarding wise because I could skate every day. I still do now. I still remember like having to drive, you know, three hours to a skate park where I could only skate once a week in England. But now I can skate every day. I mean, there's the surf as well snowboarding, it's all like right here, so it's really just kind of a great opportunity to grab and make the best of it. I wanted to stay in the UK at first because of all my friends that I'd miss, but I've made new friends over here now, and I respect that Paul Luke's out here doing a job as a professional vert skater, and yeah, I support him all the way. Come on, Luke. Backside 540, backside grab. Yeah, back to back. Front side tail grab. And it's time for a last trick. Ooh! Mac Twist, very ill. He did it. And it's gonna be time for Paul Luke Ronchetti. Oh, this will be close, this will be close. 17 years young. And he ripped it. 83.67, so it's the second place for Paul Luke. He was never smart about injuries. I mean, one time he broke his collarbone. The doctor told him it was a fracture and he should uh, take a, a bit of a rest, but of course he didn't and he snapped it in half fully. Mm. That I kind of learned from that, learn how to be patient with injuries. And I also tore a ligament in my knee, but luckily it was only the uh, posterior cruciate ligament, so you don't even really need that ligament. He's had a few other injuries with his knees and other compression related injuries. I started skateboarding, I think mainly because, you know, a kid across the street had a board and I had a go on it and it just felt really fun. And that's kind of like stuck through me the whole time. Like, I wouldn't be skateboarding if it wasn't fun. Skateboarding is just like the best feeling in the world. I mean, that's why I do it anyway. And it's basically the feeling it gives me, it makes me want to do it even more. Like learning a new trick and just kind of flying in the air.
It's definitely, it's harder these days to like be one of the top guys. You've got to really like push yourself and do as much as you can. So sometimes you do feel kind of a bit on the outside of it, but I don't know, that's usually just on a bad day if you're not having a good day or stuff like that. I mean, if you do the best and like keep on improving, then good things will happen. Uh, well, if I'm doing well in skateboarding, then I'll just kind of see how that goes. But I'll, I'll definitely keep going to college at the same time. And because uh, I mean, a, a lot of I know a lot of guys never really did college or anything like that. But I take the challenge of doing both things at the same time, seeing how it works out. Paul has been having some problems with I don't know ag anxiety and stress getting to him. He, he he has his ups and downs, but if he perseveres, I think he'll he'll make it in flying colours. Like about 20 years ago, wherever, it used to be a lot easier to just make a living out of skateboarding, and there's a lot more guys doing it. Uh, there, there are only a handful of guys now that are kind of making a really good living out of it and that are stable, you know. As the years have gone by, I've had my doubts about whether skateboarding is a feasible career for my brother. And he's actually a good musician himself. He, he plays the drums really well. and. We, we accompany each other in a rhythm section in our band. And I think, I personally think he'd have more success with that. In 20 years, I'd like to see myself making a good living out of skateboarding or having made a good living out of skateboarding. I'm not sure how old will I be in 20 years. Uh, I don't know, how old will I be in 20 years? Like 40 something? How old are you now? 18. So 38? 38. Yeah, I mean, there are a few guys right now that are skating who are like 38 years old and are still doing contests. So if I was still able to do that, that would be a really good thing. But I'm not sure how, how it's going to go. And like, you know, the economy is so weird right now. I'm not sure like what's going to happen with skateboarding. But it'd be, it'd be cool to in 20 years to still be with skateboarding and doing something to do with skateboarding and being successful with skateboarding. Yeah, it's, it's a good thing to be a role model to the younger kids that are competing. Not competing, but skating. <laughs> you can cut that bit out. Sorry. Are you coming? <laughs> you want to do some talking? I just want to know, do you want Dad to get you something from Subway? Sure. And I want to know why you're doing Jeff's college work and not yours. I'm trying to do mine. Um, yeah, could I get some Subway? Uh, chicken bacon ranch. Chicken bacon ranch. With some ranch on it. Oh. Toasted. Okay. <laughs> you be ready to eat it then? Sure. Okay. You want anything from Subway? No, I'm fine. No. Oh, sorry about that. Alright. I told you, I was have to tell Jordan not to come and chuck his bag with his own right. bacon ranch or not. The regular bread. <laughs> Chicken bacon ranch. It's a thing on the menu. Just ranch. And tomatoes. Yeah. There you go.